You know, I, I, I guess, I guess I was wrong. I guess God is a respecter of persons today, you know. Well, he, you know, he appears, you know, <laughs> onto certain uh, Pentecostal charismatics. Um, certain people go to heaven or hell. Certain people speak in tongues. And also, you know, there are certain who are saved just because of their skin color. And, uh, oh, oh, yeah, and there's this real, there's this special group <laughs> to have stopped sinning. <laughs> ah, you know, with all the nonsense of heresies that we saints have to deal with, when you come across these, and I'm being polite, these imbeciles who teach you got to stop sinning or Christians don't sin anymore. Um, let, let me give you the perspective. Antinomianist, pond scum, free grace, wicked devils. Vile, vomitous, free grace devils, okay? Them guys can readily and rightly refute the idiocy of sinless perfection. In this life, while your spirit soul are in the skin suit, sin suit, okay? It's impossible. It's impossible. Hey, Mr. Open Air Preacher, okay? You see now, old fat? You need to shut up. You're working for the Vatican. You are a devil, and you are with your false doctrine. We're going to see this guy's channel. We're not going to listen to him or anything like that. Um, I mentioned about this on Friday, in the video done on Friday, um, about this open air preacher guy. Um, who And he's, you know, gift of tongues, um, not rightly dividing the word of truth, and saying there was a video that he did, uh, and you'll see it, we're not going to watch anything of his, okay? I'm not going to subject you onto that. Uh, where he did this thing, well, why Christians who so stop sinning are persecuted. Very clever video. Why so, Brad? Well, think about it. You're a saint, and you come across some imbecile idiot like that, who's, who's number one, putting in the title of his video, you know, persecuted for not sinning anymore, for stopping sinning. So you, a saint, scripturally, rightly go to that video and go to uh, refute his nonsense. See, I'm being persecuted because I stopped sinning. It's the martyrdom complex that he's promoting. Very similar to the Jehovah's. You know the annoying Jehovah's uh, Witnesses when they come to your door and knock on the door and stuff like that and, you know, people are mean to them and um, whatnot. That adds to their persecution complex, their martyrdom complex, okay? All right. Very, very wicked man this guy is. I have not watched one minute of this man's videos either. I'm not going to give him the time. Don't need to. Okay? But that's what has started this. Now, saints, saints, dude, you and I, we know. We know. But you got to remember, dear brethren, heresies abound. Heresies abound. Okay? Sinless perfection has, it's kind of like a twofold thing. Um, Number one, it's a promotion of pride. If you, any of you, any of you, I don't care who you is, if any of you encounter somebody like Ray Comfort, Paul Washer, this old fert, uh, there's uh, Levi Price, uh, 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 what was that? even the beloved Leonard Ravenhill kind of tiptoed on this, all right? When you come across anybody who's talking to you about sinless perfection in this life, okay, that you've got to stop sinning or that they don't sin anymore, laugh at them and walk away. Don't give them the time of day. Because, hey, here's the thing there, you wicked little devil. You, <laughs> you, you, so you don't sin anymore, huh? So you're God, huh? Christ never sinned? See, when you claim that I don't sin anymore, 
That was one of the things of Jean Boschoff, by the way. It's like, no, I don't sin anymore. See, when you say that, you've committed two sins. Number one, you're lying. And number two, you're full of pride. Those are two sins that God hates. Okay? So, atheists, whoever you are, enemy, and, and even you, my vile enemy, uh, free grace idiots, even you guys, even you guys can decimate the sinless perfection. Because you guys are all about sin. And see, that's something that all you guys out there, everybody, you got to be aware of. Okay? Rome puts people into categories. Okay? You're either Catholic, Protestant, or heretic, right? The, the spectrum. You have the extreme. I don't sin anything anymore. You have the antinomianist. Well, sin! Go ahead! Because the more you sin, the more grace abounds. One thing about the antinomianist pond scum, they don't readily say, I, at least I haven't noticed, none of them actually that I have noticed, but I'm sure they do eventually, they don't outright say sin that more grace abound. But see, they do one of these. <laughs> With everything uh, uh, in works, they deny him. And everything they say, and it's like someone who would never say, like these wicked Jesuit coadjutor devils, they would never say with their lips that there is no God. But the God to them is themselves. They are of their father, the devil. And these guys, you know, like the antinomianists, they would never say, they would never outrightly say to sin so grace may abound. Some may do, some might do that. I haven't given that idiot Tom or any of that tripe uh, enough of my time to find out, and I don't want to know. But the point is, they'll go around it, see. Okay? But that's something else that you've got to be aware of. The extreme spectrum. You got the one the one thing of heresy saying, stop sinning. I don't sin anymore. Then you have the other rank, vile, grotesque heresy. It's like, go ahead and sin. Ah, don't worry about it. The more you sin, the more God's grace abounds. Okay? And we're not actually talking about you guys today, you disgusting free gracers. You guys actually can do something right when refuting these uh, <laughs> sinless perfection idiots. Okay? Now, now, Get your authorized version of the scriptures. We've talked about this before. And like I said, for you saints, this is milk. This, <laughs> this is milk. But see, one of the problems is, one of the problems is, when, when the Lord saved me 16 years ago, I was a cigarette smoker. And I promised the Lord that I was going to quit smoking. And I went a while before without a cigarette. Then, you know, some stuff happened and I had a cigarette. And I'm like, I sinned. I sinned. That crushing weight. Okay? It doesn't take a novice that long to figure out, you know, the, no matter what I do, I can't stop sinning. So, so, the heresy of sinless perfection genders itself to one, the novice. It does. Because I don't care who you think you is. Okay, if you're a saint, it ain't going to take you that long to figure out that it's impossible for you to stop sinning. Okay? <laughs> I mean, I don't care who you are. I mean, I don't care who you are. Saint. I'm talking to saints. You, you figure it out. It's like, <laughs> who wretched man that I am. Okay? I can't stop. All right? I can't. So, these guys will get a hold of the novice. And probably deceive a lot of novice people. And twist scriptures like the one guy will eventually look at. Okay, but what happens? Someone gets disillusioned with that. Then comes along the satanic antinomianist. Hey, those guys are lying. And they are. But they're lying too. Don't worry about it. Hey, the more you sin, the more God's grace abounds. So hey, and hey, you believe, right? You just believe that... That was also believe in trouble. But hey, hey, you believe, right? So see, you say, don't worry about it. They go from one spectrum of heresy to another. And all the while, never leaving the snare of the devil. This is where we saints come in. Okay? But today is the seventh. I, I found it very meat. Very proper. 
Very appropriate. Because Proverbs 7. We are, by the way, we read scripture here. Okay? I don't want you to trust me. No, don't trust me. You trust the scripture. The authorized version. The perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. Get your scriptures and read along with me. See, I make mistakes. <laughs> I make quite a few mistakes. Okay, I make mistakes. You need to read along with me so you can see it and hear it yourself. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Read along with me. See, the problem is the audience that these devils target you're not searching the scriptures. And they don't provide you with enough scripture for you to follow along or they cherry pick a verse and go off of that all day. Or they put a little stuff there and that's it. No, we're, we're about scripture here. Okay? Right there. 11 minutes in. You don't like that? Then go listen to your little fluff sugar daddies over, over there. Okay? You want the truth? His word is truth. Get the scriptures and read along with me. Be a Maria. Search the scriptures daily. What are these things we saw? And see, especially with the sinless perfection idiots. And I'm being very polite. Okay. Uh, I've been saved 16 years. My dear sweet brother, I have very little patience when I encounter a sinless perfectionist. Very little patience. I mean, I when an antinomianist can rightly refute sinless perfectionism. That shows you how ridiculous sinless perfectionism is. But then again, like I said, the spectrum that the devil works on, okay? And there's always a shade of gray. But I mean, within the realm of this disgusting Christianity, it's from one spectrum to the other. The gray area is like, you know, the universalist and whatnot. But, okay? But, like I said, I found it very neat when addressing one of the daughters of the whore. Proverbs 7. Like I said, saints, I love you. A lot of enemies watch these videos. You guys are the minority. You are. A lot of heretics, a lot of people who would beat me with a baseball bat and run me over with a car are the ones who watch these videos. Okay? and they do get exposure. So, I know, brother, I just had to say that. I know. I know. Go easy. Proverbs 7. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. And the Bereans were more noble than those of Thessalonica, and that they received the word of God with a ready mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. That was a little Brad eyes there. I might have got that mixed up. Okay. The point is, they wanted truth and they searched the scriptures. Okay. Some said, well, they were lost. Uh, they wanted truth. They searched the scripture. Period. Okay. That's a little yea hath God said nugget that a lot of, well, they were lost. Okay, okay there, Mr. Fake uh, Saint. Uh, you're a Christian. Uh, you say that? Uh, yeah, you ought to be ashamed of yourself because uh, lost people want the truth more than you and they search the scriptures daily more than you? Because you've been there, done that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't hate you. I despise you. Ah, <laughs> Uh, why, why, are you, why are you get involved with that? I'll never understand. Have fun. Anyway, bind them upon thy fingers. You can hold the scripture in your hand. Write them upon the table of thine heart. Say unto wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, thou art my sister, and call understanding, which is departing from evil, thy kinswoman. Wisdom, again, in Scripture is compared unto a beautiful woman. Okay? That they may keep thee from the strange woman. Ooh, who is the strange woman? The stranger which flattereth with her 
words. God loves you. Just believe and receive. Oh, you, you've seen God, huh? You've seen the Lord, huh? Oh, you're, you're elect because you're black. Oh, you don't sin anymore. You're special, aren't you? I can speak with tongues, yeah. What is that? I, I, you know, I, I guess I'm wrong, huh? Uh, I guess God is a respecter of persons today. Okay. That, and that's the thing. That's the thing. Let's continue. For at the window of my house, I look through my casement. We stay home while the wicked are out there. Okay, we go out, we are in the world, not of the world. But uh, in the context, this guy is looking out when it is night. So, well, how you know it's about night? But see, he's at home while the wicked at night are perusing. Check this out. For at the window of my house, I looked through my casement and beheld among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths. A young man, void of understanding, departing from evil. Okay? Passing through the street near her corner, he went the way to her house. Verse 9. In the twilight, that time of, uh, between, you know, the, when the sun's starting to go down, that kind of time frame. Okay? In the evening, in the black and dark night. Ah. Instruction and righteousness. Are there not 12 hours in the day? Not that you and I, saints, I did that when uh, coming back from Missouri and had a great time of passing out tracks in Chicago and, and it was night, okay? But the point is, the point is, we are children of the day. The reference is the children of the night. And someone who is void of understanding, departing from evil, it's like, hey, everything is lawful for me, so I'll go mingle with all wisdom. And behold, there met him a woman with the attire of an harlot and subtle of heart. Like these Christian women who, who wear things so tight that you can tell what religion they are. Yeah, and they, they look no different than the world. And they look like whores. And, and an interesting thing, uh, Brother Alexander B. Hartley, uh, the last video, which was about marriage, um, sent me some links about their... I couldn't find those, brother. So if you can find them, at least put them on your, uh, on your channel or send the link to, uh, so I could do the same too. But he showed me the thing about the ring. And um, in scripture, you don't... This is rabbit. In scripture, you don't see anything about a man putting the ring on a woman's finger. You don't see it in scripture. The opposite is true of a king ruler such as Pharaoh giving authority onto another man by putting the ring on his finger. So when you think about that, when a man's putting a ring on the finger of a woman in their marriage ceremony that is not in the scripture, what's going on there? Is the man transferring power onto the woman? Like I said, brother, I can't find that in my stuff. Uh, if you can find that again, put that link in the uh, marriage video or whatever, please. Do something with that. Do something with that. Okay? Anyway, let's continue. Back to the thing here. Okay? She is loud and stubborn. Her feet abideth not in her house. See, we, we need to go to our domicile. We need to retreat back to get refreshment with the Lord. The devils are always out there working. Okay? We, we know it's like, okay, I need to be refreshed. I need time of prayer. I need to be with our father. You've got wives. You've got children. That kind of stuff. Okay? All right? Remember, the enemy doesn't sleep unless they cause some to fall. Remember that. Remember that. Now is she without. Now in the streets and lieth and wait at every corner. Uh, I don't care where you are, like at least in Mac, you got a, a Phallus House church building on every corner, don't you? Don't you? Yes. Okay? Churches are satanic. Churches are satanic. Again, Brother Alexander B. Hartley did the work. 
don't have to do it myself. He already did it about every word, uh, every appearance of church and churches. If I remember, I will remember because I'm going to write that down. Okay? That he did the work. Okay? He did the work. Um, only one time in scripture, and it's pagans referred to their little worship houses as churches. Pagans did it. Okay? Uh, the church is the body of Christ. Okay? Anyway, let's continue. So she caught him and kissed him, and with an impudent face said unto him, I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. With an impudent face, caught him and kissed him. God loves you. Just believe and receive. you got to stop sinning. Hey, you're elect because you're black. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, have you seen God? You've seen God? Oh. oh. You speak in tongues? Oh. I guess, like I said, I guess God is a respecter of persons. I have peace offerings with me. This day have I paid my vows. Therefore came I forth to meet thee, diligently to seek thy face. And I have found thee. It's all about you. It's all about you. I don't sin anymore. You're lying. And you're full of pride. Hey, you devils, are, any of you lost people out there, you encounter one of these idiots, these uh, sinless perfection idiots, they're lying and full of pride, say that to them right away. They've committed two sin. The thought of foolishness is sin. Okay? They think they don't sin anymore. So you're God, huh? Huh? Okay? You, you, you atheists? Okay? Hey, Dave! Okay, you, you crazy guy. You you come across one of them guys, go right at him, man. Okay? Say, hey, you say you don't sin anymore. You're lying and you're full of pride. Okay? That's two sins. All right? Third sin you can say is they think they are gods. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? Nonsense. <laughs> Nonsense. All right? I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works, with fine linen of Egypt. Egypt, Old Testament, synonymous with the world for our instruction and righteousness. Egypt is a type of the world for us today in our, in our instruction and righteousness. God brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. The Lord saves you when you go the way of the cross which is brokenness, contrition, and in fear of the Lord, you call upon his name and he save you and seal you. Yes, once saved, always saved. We're, we're going to lightly touch on that. There are going to be a lot of videos for you in the description box. Okay? A lot of videos where we answer the other parts that we have rabbits on. Okay? If you don't want to watch them, it's your fault. Shut up. God loves you. <laughs> Roll up another one, buddy. Okay? But see, right there, with coverings of tapestry, carved works, with fine linen of Egypt, of the world. Carved works and tapestry. Visual stimuli. Visual stimuli. See, it's what you don't see that comes out of a saint that lets you know that, oh, that one's actually saved. Okay? That also works with people who claim to be saved and they're not. When all they do is this and blame everyone else and forget that there are three fingers pointing back at them. A saint, sooner or later, has no choice but to yield. Be like, <laughs> who, who, am else am I, who else am I to go to? You're the only one, Lord. Or... I, I can't fight it. I'm in sin. I'm a sinner. Okay? Or I've done I've messed up. A saint for a saint will go on for a little while, but sooner or later the Lord will break the saint. The false. Keep it going. Keep it going. Keep it going. Okay? I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Ah, sensory as well. So visual and sensory. Senses. Earthly, sensual, 
devilish. Yeah. That's the wisdom of this world, which is of the devil. Okay? Come. Let us take our love, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with loves. One of only two times that the word loves appear in Scripture. You go on King James Bible online, they'll say a third one. You check it, it's not in the actual text of Scripture. It's in the heading of the, uh, uh, I believe it's Psalm 140 or 145. I, I don't know offhand, but it's not in the actual text of Scripture. Got to watch it with King James Bible Online. They do stuff like that. Okay, loves only appears twice. Once in the Song of Solomon and one right there. And it's never, never in context of God loves you. Never. Especially God loves, present tense, the Christ-rejecting sinner. This love, uh, uh, that's heresy. That's heresy. Okay, you watch out for that. Okay? You're a Christ-rejecting sinner? God does not love you. Okay? You're going to preach to people, God loves you. You are lying to them. God's love is there to be had. But see, you got to go the way he chose, the way he elected, the way of the cross. See? Okay? Otherwise, God does not love you. Deal with it. All right? For the good man is not at home. He has gone a long journey. When will your Lord come back? Huh? Why hasn't he come back? <laughs> Don't worry. And when he does, um, you're done for. He had taken a bag of money with him. I will come home at the day appointed. Tie that in with the talents if you want to. With her much fair speech, she caused him to yield. With the flattering of her lips, she forced him. Sounded too good to be true. This is so good, I can't give it up. Just believe. Just believe without any brokenness, contrition, or fear of the Lord. I am my own standard. And I can go on living like I did. And hey, even, even the more sin I commit, the more, more His grace abounds. Hey, give me more of that. Or... <clears throat> I don't sin anymore. I'm elect because I'm black. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or I, I go to the church that Christ founded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He goes after her straightway as an ox goes to the slaughter or as a fool to the correction of the stocks. Why? Verse 7. And I beheld the simple, among the simple ones. I discerned among the youths a young man void of understanding. Void of uh, uh, departing from evil. You see the connotation of young man. So like I said, a babe is more likely to fall for the lie of sinless perfectionism. But you got some pompous idiot who thinks they're all that. That they think, well, God, there must have been something good in me for God to die for me, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think perhaps, maybe, no, okay? Then, of course, because you've got that pride that's never been broken, you've never been broken of your self-righteousness, just like the antinomianist pond scum, okay, their pride is in a different way in that they're, they save themselves. You guys, you sinless perfection, you're like, I am sinless. So you're God, huh? People, I, I'm telling you, seriously. You don't have to be a jerk. Don't, don't, you laugh at these people. It's not funny, but you laugh at somebody. You, you, you laugh at them. Get a little snarky with them. Don't have to be a jerk. You can be, <laughs> you can be snarky, right, bloke? You can be snarky and not be a jerk, okay? Um, have no, have no respect for this absurd doctrine that uh, it's sinless perfection. Have no respect for it. Have none. Don't even entertain it. It's a lie. Okay? I'm going to prove that to you. Okay? I'm not. The scripture is. Okay? Let's continue. Okay? Till a dart strike through his liver, 
As a bird hasteth to the snare, and knoweth not that it is for his life. Hearken unto me now here, therefore, O ye children, and attend to the words of my mouth. Let not thine heart, and he who trusts in his own heart, is a fool. And the fool has said in his heart, there is no God, except themselves, of course. Let not thine heart decline to her ways, go not astray in her paths, for she hath cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house, you know our little church buildings, her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death, and the wages of sin is death. Who is this talking about? I, and I believe, this is what I believe, the text there, which we just read, doesn't specifically name, but if you read Revelation 17, if you read Revelation 17, verses 1 on verse 6, I got told you, saints, this is milk for you and I. This isn't for you and I, even though it is. Revelation 17, 1 and 6. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, and I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great Hua that sitteth upon many waters. Look at verse uh, 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Okay, let's continue. Verse 2. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. When there's a peace thing going on, who's usually involved? Rome. The United Nations. Ooh, that's a good one for the description box. The United Nations, okay? Uh, a Jesuit creation. A Jesuit creation. I think the League of Nations was what it was called first, but that flopped. But the uh, United Nations was the one that succeeded. Okay, the link for you will be in the description box. Oh, uh, that's satanic. That's Jesuit. That's Roman Catholic. Hey, is everybody going over to Yahoo or whatever his name is in Israel? Is all the world going to Israel to meet with the head rabbi or whatnot? No. They're, they're not coming to Smoking Joe. And unfortunately, maybe soon to Kamala Harris. She was the president anyway. They just want to, I think, want to make it official now. That's a totally different subject. Okay? Is everybody going to Putin? Is everybody going to the guy in China? A China insider. Check out his stuff. Very interesting. About Gog and Magog. I, f I forget which one is China. But whatever. Whatever. Huh? No. They go to Rome. They go to Rome. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit, lowercase s, into the wilderness. And I saw a woman, Mother Church, sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of, the, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy. Islam. Mormonism, Hinduism, Christianity, Taoism, Buddhism, Shintoism. Shall I continue? And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Making a reference onto the Mass. The true colors of Rome are purple and scarlet. No, the Vatican is white and gold. That's a cover. You look at the processions of the cardinals and bishops, it's purple and scarlet. The white and gold is a front, a distraction. Okay? This is talking about Roman Catholicism. And let me tell you, people, let me tell you, a novice, a babe in Christ, could fall for the lie that America, 
America is Babylon. No, it's not. What are our colors? I rest my case. Okay? But someone, a novice could. But if that novice be an actual saint, the Lord's pretty readily will probably lead you out of that idiocy. Okay? That's, a, that's stupid. When you got people who are claiming to have been saved, these Christians, like Eric Lionheart, like Stephen Anderson, like Henry Morris and his study Bible, like Kent Helvin, saved for years and years and years and years and years. And they say things like, America is Babylon. There's no evidence to suggest that this is Rome. Those people are working for the Vatican. You mark my words. Because Revelation 17, in the authorized version, of course, is very plain and specific of who this is. This is Roman Catholicism. Okay? And when you got a Christian who's been a Christian for a long, long time, and they're telling you that America is Mystery of Babylon, they're working for the Vatican! They're Jesuit coadjutors! Okay? Do not believe them. They're lying to you. And Stephen Anderson, he's a sodomite. I'd say that to his face so he could shoot me with his AK-47 and my wife would live off the royalties. Okay? I'm just saying. Okay? Any Christian preacher, teacher, or whatever, Christian. I'm not a Christian, by the way. I'm a saint. Okay? Get your... What is a saint? Uh, okay, the, the best um, uh, uh, bread of life uh, fellowship that Brother Alexander and I have had yet. Oh, is what is a saint? That's the best one we did uh, that the Lord gave us. will be in the description box. I'm a saint. I'm not a Christian. Anyone who's saved is a saint. So, mark my words. Remember, anyone come around telling you that Mystery Babylon is America or anyone other than Rome, they're working for Rome! Hence, they're not saved. Hence, they're devils. Watch out. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Oh, it should be Christians, right? <laughs> Drop it with that nonsense. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. It's like, wow, how are you able to get away with this? Wow, that's, wow, that's what that means. The sinless perfection thing is of Satan. But, but what do you say? What are some of your arguments there, you wicked devil? Oh, you guys like John chapter 5, don't you? You like John chapter 5. <laughs> and a saint right away who's watching this, you're, you're like, Brad, the problem is they're not, not yet. I know. I know. This is a result of it. See, this is a result. John 5, verses 10 on to verse 16. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, it is, a, am I in the right place? Yes, I am. John 5, yes? Yes, okay. <laughs> the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he which was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. Lest the worst thing come upon thee. Come unto thee. Excuse me. See, you said it right there. We gotta stop sinning. <laughs> Question. Um, had Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? Come on, even you, even you atheist people couldn't answer this one. No, he hadn't. 
That's significant? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll explain in a minute. Let's, keep, let's, get, let's read on to verse 16. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. And then you'll see in this wicked devil uh, open air preacher, this old fert, um, he has that video that I mentioned um, why uh, Christians who have stopped sinning are persecuted. A very, very shrewd, very clever video. Any saint going to correct that man would only bolster the uh, the complex that he's putting off to the people who watch him. Okay, the the, the man you're going to see eventually is very evil. Very evil. Avoid him. He's a liar. He's preaching sinless perfection, talking in tongues. The guy's a wicked devil. Hey, you old fart, you see me? The Lord rebuke you. And uh, isn't it time for you to go to your hot bed? Hey, Saint. You got a guy teaching sinless perfection, talking in tongues and all that stuff? Dude, that guy gone. The impossible is possible with God. Yes, it is. Is it probable teaching that they are that they are God? That they don't sin anymore? That they're just like Jesus? That they don't sin anymore? You're out of, they're gone, dude. They're gone. The impossible is possible with God. Yes, it is. But a guy like that in his advanced stage, uh, 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 no, he's gone. Okay? He is our enemy. Okay? I know a lot of you saints have a problem with that, but that's just a fact. That man is going to hell. But anyway, you'll see in a little while. Let's continue. Okay? Uh, let's continue. And what's the other one that you guys, and this is the one more common, more common to them. Uh, John 8, verses 1 and verse 11. Jesus went out the Mount of Olives. Jesus went unto, excuse me, the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman, taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto her, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? See, trying to trap him. Trying to entice him. See, Hold your place here. Luke 11. Luke 11. Luke 11. Oh, verses 46 on 54. And he said, Woe unto ye, woe unto you also ye lawyers, the ones who know the law. See, this guy, this open-air preacher devil, he's aware of what the scriptures say. And like I've told you before, for someone to deceive like the antinomianists who preach their disgusting slop, okay, they have to have a working knowledge of what is true in order to deceive people so readily, okay? Which makes it far worse for them. And same with this guy, okay? For ye laid men with burdens grievous to be born, and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers, teaching that you got to stop sinning. Okay? And yet, you say you don't sin, you're full of pride, and you've lied. Two sins already. You're out. I know the third strike, and you're out, is that you are your own God. Just like every heresy out there. Okay? Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and, of your, and your fathers killed them. Truly, ye bear witness that ye allow the deeds of your fathers, for they indeed killed them ye build their sepulchers. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute, that the blood of all the prophets which was shed from the foundation of the world may be required of this generation, from the blood of Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, which perished between the altar and the temple. Verily I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. Woe unto you, lawyers, you teachers. For ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves. And them that were entering in ye hindered. 
Same with the antinomianists. None of them are saved. And they're keeping people from salvation because they are their own standard and they believe that they save themselves by their own faith, by their own belief. Okay? And as he said these things, and this is what happens to the saints, as, and as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees, which were just decimated, began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things. You're a coward. You won't do a live stream. Why don't you talk with them? What fellowship hath light with darkness? I'm not going to talk with the devil knowingly, readily, in such a context. It's not going to happen. Okay? You can go ahead and play your little uh, immature, juvenile, childish, oh, uh, you're a car. Uh, hey, hey there, uh, spunky britches, a little pretty boy. Why don't you show your face every once in a while, huh? Oh, I know you did. Why don't you do it now? Huh? Huh? Sugar pie. Sugar pie, sweet pie. Yeah. Laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. Let's read that again. And as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and to provoke him to speak of many things. Laying wait for him and seeking to catch something out of his mouth that they might accuse him. And John 8, verse 5, Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. What sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard him not. Just, and it's like, get out of here. It's like when you encounter someone telling you, to just, you know, you got to stop sinning. Okay? The sleazy believers are very persuasive. We got a lot of videos refuting their stupidity, their garbage, slop heresy. Okay? Lots of that. These guys, these guys don't even, the, these sinless perfection guys, don't even pay them mind. Okay? So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, I picture... He's like, you know, it's like you're tempting me. Get, get out of here. And they keep pestering him. I could just see him doing one of these. <sighs> Oy vey. And then looking at them. He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Look at their reaction. The Pharisees of yesteryear the Pharisees, the Sadducees, you know, the ones that crucified Jesus, handed him over to Rome to be crucified, I should say. That's the truth. No Jew held the nail, the literal physical nail at the crucifixion. The Jews did not crucify Jesus physically. They handed him over. But it was Rome who did it. They were experts at it. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest. The eldest. This guy's an old fart. He knows that he's lying to you. Jean Bashoff, you know, well, he knows now, okay? He was probably so deluded. I don't know, and I don't care, okay? But the point is, the Pharisees and Sadducees of yesterday, of yesteryear, are far more righteous than any of the Christians today. And even of those who, pra who claim to practice scriptural Judaism. And if they were practicing scriptural Judaism, they would be a messianic Jew, a saint. Okay? Uh, and they which heard it begin be being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone. And the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself, he saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She saith, No man, Lord. And Jesus saith unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go, and sin no more. Question! 
that Jesus died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet. Huh? Come on. Did he? No. What are you doing with, with this hot shot? Uh, in Ecclesiastes 7. Today is the 7th. Uh, I am a proponent of if you're going to be one, if you your, your life is too busy that you can't spend time in Scripture, read the corresponding proverb at least. Read the corresponding Ecclesiastes and Song of Songs. Song of Solomon, at least. You should do more. But that's, that's better than nothing. A verse a day is better than nothing. Okay? Anyway, Ecclesiastes 7, 15 on to 22. All these things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that prolongeth his life in his wickedness. Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Why shouldest thou die? Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? We got a video on that. Brother asked that of me a couple years ago. That will be in the description box, and I'll be able to find that. Uh, what those? What is those two talking about? Check the description box. We got a video on it. Okay. It is good that thou shouldest take hold of this. Yea, also from this withdraw not thine hand, for he that feareth God shall come forth of them all. When you save yourself by your own belief, you are your own God. You don't fear the God who is. When you are sinless like God, where is your fear of God? You are your own God. It is good that thou shouldest take hold of this. Yea, also from this what draw not thine hand. For he that feareth God shall come forth of them all. Wisdom, fear of the Lord, strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. Yeah, because the mighty men are driven by what? Flesh. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. What do you do with that? And that's Old Testament, just like it is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Also take no heed unto all words that are spoken, lest thou, lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. You know, when someone's cussing you out, you got to remember, you know, I was once lost too. I once spake like that as well. Water off a duck's back. But you know, um, for there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Hmm. Hmm. Jesus, but Jesus said, go and sin no more. Sin no more. He sh yes, he did. Question. Had he died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? No, he didn't. You know what else he said? And there was some wicked heretic, um, uh, uh, what's it, a uh, progressive, whatever, whatever he was, a uh, wicked Christian guy who mentioned this. <laughs> and uh, I forget what his name was. But in Matthew 10, verses 5 on to verse 8, but let's read verse 8. Let's read verse 8. Jesus also said, heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. So Jesus also said, heal the sick. He didn't say pray for the sick. He said, heal the sick. That's what that one effeminate, wicked devil guy said. I forget, I, Phil Johnson or something like that. I forget, I forget. I, it's not important. But he, he did the same thing. You know, these, these uh, sinless perfection idiots. Says, he said, sin no more. You're right, he did. He also said, uh, heal the sick. Hmm. Let's get a little context, shall we? Now let's read verses 5 on to verse 8. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not in the way of the Gentiles, and into any of the city, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. 
as ye go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Saints, we know this. The kingdom of heaven only appears in the book of Matthew. Every single time that you read kingdom of heaven, it is always a reference onto the physical, literal kingdom, that's east, that is at Jerusalem. It's talking about the physical, literal kingdom. The kingdom of God is a reference onto the spiritual kingdom, not the physical. There are rare incidences in scripture where kingdom of God can be a reference onto the physical kingdom. But more often than not, when you see kingdom of God, it's a reference on to the spiritual. Kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God are not the same thing. Okay? You have to understand that. Okay? That's part of your problem. They're not the same. But he said, heal the sick. But he also said what? But ra go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And in Matthew 15, Matthew 15, which these, you know, before the death, burial, and resurrection, the law was still binding. Why? Because the perfect uh, sacrifice for sins had yet to be made. So doctrinally, before the death, burial, and resurrection, the law was still binding. Guess what? It was still the Old Testament. You might be, but, but, but Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're, they're in the books allocated as the New Testament. Yes, but doctrinally, before Christ Jesus died, buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, you know, crucified and shed his blood on the cross, before that event, the law was still binding. Don't fall for this. Uh, the One of the dispensations was the three-year ministry of the Lord. That's no, no. The law was still binding. He told people for a testimony to go offer the sacrifice of Moses as a testimony unto them. The law was still binding. Don't fall for that nonsense. That's, that's crazy. No, no, no. The law was still binding. You know what that means? There was no eternal security. There was no circumcision made without hands, which is the Lord in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. We're going to read that today. Okay? So, so, Matthew 15, 21 on the 24. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coasts and carried him saying and cried unto him saying have mercy on me O Lord thou son of David my daughter is grievously vexed with a devil a hey, brother see the Canaan how it's spelled there with the spelling help or the uh, key whatever it is it's different in the one that I use daily they have it a three syllable well, this one is a two-syllable. That's interesting. All the pronunciation keys don't aren't identical. That's interesting. Anyway, that's for for whatever. Okay. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, "Send her away, for she crieth after us." Verse twenty-four. But he answered and said, "I am not sent." but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And you know, he said, heal the sick, raise the dead. Okay? In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, the Jews, the Hebraic Jews, require a sign. And the Greeks, Gentiles, seek after wisdom. Here's your problem there, pal. Here, here's the problem. Yes, Jesus said to go and sin no more. The law was still binding. There was no eternal security. They were still offering animals for sin. Okay? So, where there was no eternal security, if you sinned and died under the Old Testament and were not cleansed, whenever you died could put you in hell. And if you died while you were clean... 
that could put you in Abraham's bosom. What am I getting at? Hebrews chapter 9. Hey! Oh, fact! Tell me. Tell me. When did the New Testament begin? This that that idiot, he'd probably say, with the birth of Jesus. Or like that idiot uh, Scott said. I'm uh, not Scott. He didn't. Never mind. Uh, Tom. Tom said. Oh, what? With uh, the Council of Nicaea? Warning! That, that Tom guy, uh, he believes that the New Testament began <laughs> with the Council of Nicaea? Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah, boy! Yeah! Praise that he isn't. Oh, boy. Yeah, okay. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 on to verse 17. Pay attention. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once, Catholic, into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal capitalist spirit offered himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God and for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance for where a testament is there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. Verse 17. For a testament is of force half to men are dead. Otherwise it is no strength at all while the testator liveth. Hmm. What does that mean? It's called rightly dividing the word of truth. The way we are made right, saved today with the Lord, is not the way someone was made right with the Lord under the law. During the patriarchal period, definitely not during the Garden of Eden, which was all works. Okay? The time of Jacob's trouble, which is coming after the redemption of the purchased possession. A lot of you uh, erroneously refer to it as the pre-tribulation rapture. And rapture isn't in the scripture, by the way. And, and the definition of rapture isn't even found in it either. Okay? Okay? So give me a break. All right? Before Jesus Christ died, buried, and rose again, the third day according to the scriptures, when he was on the earth, he was offering the physical, literal kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jewish people. The faith that they were to have before the death, burial, and resurrection was in him as their king. Like the Sermon on the Mount that so many of these heretics like. What was the faith that they were supposed to have in his death, burial, and resurrection? They didn't know about it. They didn't know about it. Or else Peter wouldn't have said, This be far from thee, Lord. Okay? They didn't know about the death, burial, and resurrection. The faith that they were to have before the death, burial, and resurrection was in him as king. Not in the death, burial, and resurrection. So, and under the law, if you died and you hadn't gotten cleansed by the uh, blood of goats and bulls, you died, you could have gone to hell. But if you had just been cleansed and gotten run over by a cart or a bull or an ox, you could have gone to Abraham's bosom. See how that works? Okay? And the, you know, he said to heal the sick. Uh, those were sign gifts for the Jews. Okay? 
See, your problem is, and this is the problem with guys like this. They're taking things that were valid for another dispensation and try to make it valid today. And under the law, there was no sinless perfection otherwise, or else what do you do with Ecclesiastes 7, 15 through 22? Okay? David sinned. Okay? Okay? Sinless perfection is impossible while in the skin suit. Okay? The Ten Commandments are God's perfect requirements. And he gave them to man to show man that even at your best, you couldn't keep them. This guy, you sinless perfection devils, you're saying you're God. That you don't sin anymore. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. And I hope you get what's coming to you. I hope you get saved. But you're, you're preaching and teaching people that they got to stop sinning. You're a devil. You've made, you're gone. I think it's about time for your hot bed, boy. Brad, that's so cool. Dude, they're teaching people that they got to stop sinning. Man cannot do It's impossible. Even the free gracer can get that one right. Okay? Even they can get that one right. But then again, remember, they're all about sin. But even, even they can readily, rightly refute sinless perfectionism. Okay? But see, again, they're taking things from another dispensation and trying to apply them today. They are not rightly dividing the word of truth. Luke 22. Luke 22. Verses 31 and 38. Okay? Luke 22. 31 on verse 38. And the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon. Uh, the, the pronunciation key even gives it to the Shimon. Behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Guess what? Guess what? Peter wasn't saved yet. Oh, oh that, 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 that infuriates you Catholics. That, that infuriates your, you Catholics. Peter wasn't saved. <laughs> because death, burial, and resurrection hadn't happened yet. Peter was not saved. At this point. Of course, he's up in heaven now, of course. But at this point, he, he wasn't saved. And he said unto him, Lord, <clears throat> I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. <clears throat> I don't sin anymore. Or, I, hey, I, I, I say myself by my own belief. <sighs> I, I'm, I'm one of the elect because I'm black. Oh, flip that. Go ahead. Oh, I'm I'm one of the elect because I'm an English uh, uh, English person or or British or whatever, right? Go ahead, go ahead, because like I said I guess I guess God is a respecter of persons today, isn't He? Yeah, yeah. And He said, "I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me." And He said unto them, "When I sent you without, uh, what are we reading to?" Where are we re verse 38. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse or scrip, <laughs> and shoes lacked ye anything? And they said nothing. Then said he unto them, But now, but now is very important. He that hath a purse, let him take it. And likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. For I say unto you, that this, that this that is written must yet be accomplished in me. And he was reckoned among the transgressors, for the things concerning me have an end. And right there, scriptural cross-reference, he's referencing Isaiah 53. And they say, Lord, behold, 
Here are two swords. And he said unto them, it is enough. Verse 36 is key. Why? But now. See, he was on his way to die, bury, rise again, third day according to the scriptures. He was on his way to the cross to shed his blood for the remission of sins. Okay? He was about to go to the cross. For that, the law was still binding, and he as king. The, you know the miracle of the loaves and fishes? It's like, how is it that you do not understand? Okay? As king, as he will during the kingdom of heaven. The king can miraculously provide for his own. The king will protect his own as king. Okay? That's why he's like, mentions the sword. While he's there, you know, hey, hey, the king is on the earth. These people who believe in me as king, Mashiach, okay? All right, that's what that means. But now, what does he mean by now? But by now, the dispensation was about to change. He was about to go to the cross. He was about to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? All right? That's what that means. All right, and Ephesians 3, the clearest place to go to prove that rightly dividing means salvation changes within the dispensation. Free grace, devil, pond scum, antinomianists tell you they will use the phrase rightly dividing, but they say that God's grace is what changes. No, God's grace, grace is unmerited favor. The greater blessing the lesser. And see, with both of these heresies, free grace and sinless perfectionism, you are your own God. The free gracer, they are their own God because they save themselves by their own belief. And they'll do everything to justify sin. The sinless perfection idiot, they believe they're God because they don't sin anymore. Hmm. I will be like the Most High? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, huh? But, Ephesians 3, verses 1 on verse 6. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me to your work, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, Whereby, when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Look at verse 5. Okay. Antinomianists, King James Bible believing Christians like Stephen Anderson, Kent Hoven, Helvin. Okay. They tell you that they were looking forward to the cross in the Garden of Eden during the patriarchal period. There are types of the cross, like with the Exodus and also with uh, the flood. But they did not know about the death, burial, and resurrection. Prove it to you. Absolutely. Which in other ages, or dispensations, other ages, was not made known unto the sons of men. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles, mentioned first, and prophets by the capital S Spirit, the Lord Himself. The Lord revealed it to them. Dude, listen. They were not looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. Yes, there were types of it with the Exodus and Noah's flood, yes. They were, you know, if they had known about the death, burial, and resurrection to come, Peter would have never said what he said. This be far from thee, O Lord. Okay? They would have been like sad, but also in a way happy because they knew that it's what had to be done for their sakes. Don't, don't, people, do, don't fall for this idiot, idiotic lie that they were looking forward to the cross. They weren't. Okay? Verse 6 that the Gentiles should be heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ Jesus by the gospel. Matthew 27, verses 50 on to verse 53. 
Matthew 27, verses 50 on to verse 53. Now it's Zechariah. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose, and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. But the, the temple, the, uh, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. Hebrews 9, again, verses 8 on to verse 10. Hebrews 9, again, verses 8 on to verse 10. The Holy Ghost is signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while well, as the first tabernacle was yet standing. Something had to change. The veil was rent from top to bottom. The way to the holiest where the ark was, supposedly. Well, where the ark was. Okay. And they, they, where the ark was. Excuse me. And, you know, that was taken away. Why? Died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The dispensation changed. Which was a figure for the time then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washings and cardinal ordinances imposed on them until the time of Reformation. And that's not talking about the Protestant Reformation. I've encountered that on several occasions. Say, see, that's talking about the Protestant Reformation. Uh, they were Catholics who wanted to reform Catholicism. God did use the Protestant Reformation. Yes, he did. But you got to remember, they were Catholics wanting to reform Catholicism. And guess what? You can't reform what God has destined to destruction. Keep that in your mind when you're dealing with these devils too, by the way. Okay? Keep that in mind. And of course, Colossians 2. Colossians 2. Colossians 2. See, you got to rightly divide the word of truth, dear friend. And because heretics do not use... They are hyper-dispensationalists, but they're crazy anyway. They got kind of a form of it right, but they, be, they say they, their big thing is that there's two bodies. That there's one body of Gentile and one of the Jew. That being born again, and even little sweetheart sugar britches uh, teaches this. That, you know, well, born, being born again is for the Jews only, not us Gentiles. Oh, so there are two bodies. No, there's only one body. Okay? That's part of hyper-dispensationalism. You can't, you know, their ways are movable. That thou canst not know them. You can't pin specifically... You know, some of these heresies. Why? Because their ways are movable that thou canst not know them. You can pick up their tenets, but ultimately know that they're a daughter of the whore. Okay? Now, let's continue. <laughs> Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. See, the whole point of the law was to show you how inadequate you are. Okay? And if you're going around thinking you don't sin anymore, you're deceived, you're lying, and you're full of pride. Okay? You, 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 you're, you're, you're crazy. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Hold your place there. One real quick reference. First John chapter 5 verse 7 the Johannian comma which is not talking about the Trinity it's talking about who God is you and I are made in the image of God we have a we have a spirit we have a soul we have a body for there are three that bear record in heaven the Father the Word which was made flesh 
that's capital W, one of seven appearances of capital W word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. It does not say in essence, does it? They are one. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body, the Holy Ghost, God the Father, the soul, the Word made flesh, the body. Okay? The Trinity is a creation of Satan. It's demonic, excuse me, devilish, vile, rank, disgusting. It's not true. Here, here's what. It's to hell with your Trinity. Yeah. Yeah, you heard me right. All right, let's continue. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. See, your spirit and soul, which are in this sagging sin suit, means you can, the body of sins, Sin was relegated to the flesh. All flesh is sinful. See, God in flesh kept the law perfectly. Hence, that sinful flesh was sanctified. That's why his blood is precious. Because God never sinned. Okay, God never sinned. Can't sin. It's impossible for him to sin. So, perfect God in sinful flesh who kept the law perfectly, that's how that sinful flesh was sanctified because Christ never sinned and kept the law perfectly. Okay? And remember at his circumcision, the appropriate and correct offerings were made for him at circumcision. See, that's, that's, that's how it works. Okay? All flesh is sinful. But see, God in human... God in the flesh of man, who kept the law perfectly, sanctified that sinful flesh. God lives in us, but guess what? We're not God. They say, ye shall be as gods. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> be as gods, knowing good and evil. Uh-huh, ye are gods, right? Ye are... You are gods, right? You're going to, right? Video for that in the description box. We're not God. We sin. The thought of foolishness is sin. Christ never had a foolish thought. You thinking that you save yourself by your own belief? You thinking that you don't sin anymore? Ah, uh, that's foolish. That's being a fool. Okay? Okay? Verse 12. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together, made alive with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross, nailing it to his cross. But then again, see, he's talking about the law, which man couldn't keep perfectly at their best. But see, the antinomianist sweeps in and preaches that, hey, we're not bound any unto any law, even the morality of the law. Okay? They say we're not bound or obligated to it morally, even. Okay, the license to sin will be in the description box exposing these wicked devils, okay? They say morally you're not even obligated to it. So, oh, I guess you could kill you. I guess you can commit adultery. Hey, like Carlin said, I guess you could cover it because it creates jobs, right? And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly triumphing over them in it. Okay? See, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. 
when the Lord said, go and sin no more, the law was still binding. If they had sinned and they had not been cleansed, they would have gone to hell. If they sinned and were cleansed, or they sinned, they got cleansed, hit by a runaway ox, they would go to Abraham's bosom. That's what it was like under the law. Okay? That's what it was like under the law. There was no eternal security under the law. The Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit was not a permanent resident in uh, under the law like he is today. Okay? You gotta rightly divide the word of truth. You can't stop sinning. These people are lying to you. Now you'll you'll be like, well, even your Paul, and I wouldn't be surprised of this jerk that we're going to look at. I'm just going to show it to you. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he calls Paul a false prophet. I would not be surprised at all. 1 Corinthians 15, 30 on verse 34. 1 Corinthians 15, 30 on verse 34. Why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus... What advantage is it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Communications. Which is more than your verbal. It is also your bodily language as well. Evil communications. That includes profanity, yes. But also evil communications. Believe and receive. You got to stop sinning. You're saved because of your skin color. You have to go to the church that Christ founded. Okay? Verse 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Here it is. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Well, I guess Paul, you know, hey, Paul himself, see? Sin not! Now, Paul believed in not sinning. He didn't want to sin. Yes, he didn't want to sin. But there was a problem. We'll address that here coming up. Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4. 20, uh, 26 on to 27. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. If you go to bed angry, you're giving place to the devil. Hey, there's nothing wrong with anger if it's in the right context. If it's righteous indignation. Okay? There isn't. That's a different to uh, topic. Okay? But if you go to bed angry with like your spouse, your husband, or your wife, and nothing is resolved, ooh, you give place to the devil. Or that's in any context. You go to bed angry, ooh, give place to the devil. How many of us? <laughs> huh? Hmm? Okay. But, I, but, but, hey, what do you do with that, right? Sin not! He, he said it right there. And see, another interesting thing is with these people who preach sinless perfectionism, they, of course, they're, of course, uh, if you sin, you lose your salvation to these guys. They don't believe in once saved, always saved. Okay? They don't. See, the antinomianists preach once saved, always saved. But they preach that as a license to justify sin. Okay? They do. The sinless perfectionist, they preach. They, I mean, this guy you're going to see, of course he doesn't believe in eternal security because if you got to stop sinning, then you, you are your own God. And if you sin, what happens? And you know where these people go to? They go to Hebrews 6. And you know what's interesting? Every single one of these guys who preach that you can lose your salvation. Number one, it's not your salvation. It's the Lord. He is our peace. He is the redemption of the purchased possession. He is the blessed hope. 
He is our righteousness. It's not our salvation. It's the Lord's salvation. We can't lose what isn't ours. But if you're saving yourself by your own belief, they, 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 it's more so these sinless perfectionists. But if you, you know, you got to stop sinning, what happens if you sin? Well, you've lost your salvation, right? They come here, Hebrews 6. But they always teach you that you can get it back, don't they? Any of you who are messed up with sinless perfection, that's the case. I sinned. I, I, I'm lost. I lost my salvation. <laughs> your salvation, sir. You're not saved to begin with because you're your own God. You think you're God. You think you're God. You don't sin anymore. Okay? Like I said, free gracers can readily um, pounce on that rightly. I think even Elmer from New York did a really good refutation of sinless perfection. Okay? I, I, I think it was Elmer, uh, the guy, the inquisitor from New York. You know, I, I believe he did it. But, I, I mean, they can. Because they're all about sin anyway. Okay? But, you know, you sinless perfectionists. You've sinned. Oh, you've lost your salvation. But they say that they can get it back. But they like to go to Hebrews. But look at what Hebrews says. Hebrews 6. And remember, the book of Hebrews is written unto the who? The Hebraic Jews. For the Hebraic Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Again, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. There is stuff in here for us today in this dispensation, yes. But the book of James and also the book of Hebrews are books specifically written for the Hebraic Jewish people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? Any questions? Uh, uh, the video on James 2 will be in the description box for you. But Hebrews uh, 6, uh, where am I? Hebrews 6, verses 1 on verse 6. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. This is the verse they like. For it is impossible... For those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers to, of the world to come, the kingdom of heaven, if they shall fall away, hey, Mr. Fig, you know, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, you're trying to say that Paul was writing... For uh, to the Jews of the time of Jacob's trouble? Uh-uh. No. People who fall away are the lost people. Saints sin every day. A just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. Those who are not of us, they are the ones who fall away. Okay? If they, fall, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. Hebrews 6 uh, tells you that once you fall away, you can't get it back. But see, today, if you mess up, if a saint messed up, you don't lose your salvation because it's not yours to lose. Why is this here? Because during the time of Jacob's trouble, you take that mark of the beast in your right hand or in your forehead, you're done. You're done. You're, you're going to hell. No, if you can't, you don't believe this. Well, you can cut off your head or God. No, you're already, you're done. And see, the sleazy believest with their just believe and receive, after we, the body of Christ, be taken out of the way and you're left with them devils, they're going to be preaching that say, hey, just believe and receive. Well, what about the, you, you know, the, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Hey, you got to provide for your own. If you don't, you're an infidel, huh? Don't worry about it. You believe. You saved yourself. Take the mark of the beast. And they do that, they're damned. And see, the sleazy believists are setting you guys up for that, for after we, the body of Christ, are gone. You understand? But see, today, in this dispensation, you go to the Lord, His way, the way of the cross, which is brokenness of your self-righteousness. 
contrition. It's your fault that he said, it's my fault. I put him on the cross. Have the hell scared out of you. And see, when you are broken of your self-righteousness and you take responsibility and you have the hell, hell scared out of you, you you can't help but, Lord, save me. You, it, 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 it just like that. And see, you antinomianists, you uh, sinless perfectionists, you don't have that because you believe that you are your own God. Oh, uh, uh, 2 Timothy 2 2 Timothy 2 okay 2 Timothy 2 this is not part of the notes but got a, uh, got a, got a hit on it okay 2 Timothy 2 very quickly verses 11 on to 13 it is a faithful saying if we, be we, if we be dead with him dead to ourselves in the world we shall also live with him if we suffer we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Again, this is not talking about your salvation. It's not your salvation. A saint? Oh, a saint can get messed up in all kinds of sin. Yes, they can. He, you can be denied grace. You can be denied fellowship. You can be denied mercy. You can be denied health. You can be denied provision. You can be denied so many things. But salvation doesn't belong to you. It belongs to the Lord. And when you go the way of the cross, the way He ordained, the way He elected, and He saves you, He seals you with Himself. Once saved, always saved. Until the redemption of the purchased possession, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. You're sealed. Okay? You're sealed. That's not talking about losing salvation. I'm sure this idiot would tell you that is. No, it isn't. Because, keep reading. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. What does that mean? Back into uh, Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Verse 30, For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. He can't deny himself. That does not mean that we are little Christs. No, 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 nay. Oh, nay, nay. Oh, nay, nay. I forget what video we talk, we talk about that in. Um, I think it's the one with the devil on it. Uh, or supposedly. I'll put that. will be in the description box as well. We, we belong to the Lord. We're sealed. We're eternally secure. Okay? Alright? But see, and this guy also does this exact same thing. 1 John 3. 1 John 3. Uh, people. People. 1 John 3. Verses 8 on to verse 10. 1 John 3. Verses 8 on to verse 10. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. See, you got to stop sinning. <clears throat> and this guy we're going to look at, he, he, he tries to refute the truth of what's being told you right now of this. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Devil, whosoever, doth not, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So see, if you were, if you were Christ, then you wouldn't sin anymore. What is this talking about? Well, let's read now verses 1 on to verse 7. Let's get the true context. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him 
purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Hope in him. Hope in him. Hope in him. Hmm? Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, just verse 1. Hope in him. Hmm. 1 Timothy 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. Colossians. Colossians 1, verses 26 on to 29. Colossians 1, 26 on to 29. Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations. Again, they were not looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. But now is made manifest to his Christians. Saints. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. The hope of glory. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, the fear of the Lord, that we present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Not sinlessly perfect. You can't stop sinning. You can't. It's a lie. It's a lie. Okay? Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Yes, we are to strive against sin. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. But you can't stop sinning. You can't. It's impossible. As your spirit and soul are in the sagging sin suit, you can't stop sinning. Anyone who says so, they're lying, full of pride, and they're lost. A babe will get uh, deceived by that for a little while. But if, you know, you got these guys who've been saved for many years, and I don't sin anymore, you're, you're going to hell. And I think it's right, right about time for you. Okay? Back to now, back to 1 John chapter 3. Okay? Verse 3 again. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure. Look right across the page in 1 John chapter 2, verse 20. But ye have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Look at verse 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, Ye shall abide in him. And the spirit of truth, he shall guide you into all truth. And the Lord is that spirit. And you see in verse 3, Every man that hath this hope in him, Christ in you. Christ in you. Question. Did Christ sin? No, he didn't. Can Christ sin? No. The Holy Ghost, Spirit of the Lord, and the Lord is that Spirit. The Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. You're a saint, you got the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit dwelling within you. The Holy Ghost, God our Father, cannot sin. And I should have brought out the gun to really tick off that devil, Scott. But God isn't holding a gun to your head forcing you to walk in his precepts to do what is right you've got to make the right decision neither is the devil pointing a gun at your head forcing you to do what he wants you to do you have to make the decision to do yay yay or nay nay okay God doesn't for God is not a God of coercion as the Cal Calvinists teach okay whosoever whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. What sin? But right there. Okay? And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Okay? So context so far. In him is no sin. Okay? The hope that is in us is the Lord Jesus Christ. We just proved that. Okay? Jesus Christ can't sin. God cannot sin. God will never sin. Okay? You, saint, have God within you. God within you cannot sin. Okay? 
But then again, remember, God isn't pointing a gun to your head, forcing you to do what is right. Saints can sin. Okay? This is not talking about you being sinlessly perfect. You idiot! It's talking about who dwells in you. The Lord or that spirit of Antichrist, which is that spirit of this world. That's what this is talking about. Let's continue. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. See, if you walk according to the way the Lord would have you to, sin not. Yes. But see, not even Paul, the greatest of the church of the living God, could walk, abide in the Lord 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Couldn't do it. And you guys who claim sinless perfection, you can't do that. Paul couldn't do it, but you can. Oh, because you're God, right? Because you don't sin anymore. <clears throat> you, you take that stupid doctrine of yours and go to hell. Whoso abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Mm. Little children. See, when you do it God's way, there's no sin in doing it God's way. The minute you deviate, that's where problem comes in. Ain't that right, brother, sister? Hey, see this? Right? I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. It's all. Uh, the woman thou gavest me to be with, she gave me. It's all their fault. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. See, God in you will guide you into truth. God in you will guide you away from sin. Yes, he will. Not by force, or else he's a God of coercion, and the Calvinists are right, and they're not right. Okay? You can't be sinlessly perfect. You do it God's way, there's no way of sinning doing it God's way. God's way. No, there isn't at all. But see, Paul, the apostle, couldn't do it. And you guys think you can. The Lord rebuke you. And you can take your satanic little doctrine that comes from Rome and go to hell with it. Okay? Now, verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Hold your place. Go to John 8. Go to John 8. Okay? John 8, 44. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He wanted to be God. I will be like the Most High. Isaiah 14, verses 12, on to verse 15. Okay? He was a murderer from the beginning, yea, hath God said. And abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own. He is his own God. Just like the antinomianists, just like you devil, sinless perfectionists. He speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. See, when you come around saying, you got you to gotta stop sinning, um, you're a liar. You've sinned. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Being born again, being made a new creature, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That Christ in you is what makes you a new creature. Watch out for people who talk about change life, change life, change life. What changes your life? You being a new creature? Or because of some fleshly thing you do, like an alcoholic anonymous or a narc anonymous guy? Who can have a changed life, but they're not made a new creature. Okay? You, 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 King James Bible in Christian, change life, change life gospel. Shut up! It's a new creature. The new creature makes for the changed life. See, you're carnal. It's a new creature. Devils can have a changed life. Saints are new creatures that lead into a new life. Or change life. Okay, watch out for that's a subtle little heresy. That is, hey, change life gospel, amen. What 
brings about the changed life. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. That's a reference unto the Holy Ghost within the saved believer. The Father in you cannot, will not, nor guide you into sin. He can't. He won't. God can't sin. You're born again because you are made a new creature. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. God within you cannot sin. God will not guide you into sin. Okay? This is not talking about you being sinlessly perfect. God is sinlessly perfect who dwells within you. You, on the other hand, you're not God. Because he is born of God, being born again. In this Children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Who doeth, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. Not righteousness. You don't sin anymore. You're, you're calling yourself God. And you're lying. And you're full of pride. That's not righteous. That's sin. And of course... The, uh, the nail in the coffin of that is Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. In whom ye also trusted after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that holy capital of spirit of promise, the Lord himself, his seed remaineth in him. God within you can't sin. You sin every day. And you lie and your breath stink of dung. And I can smell from here, you sinless perfectionist devil. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. That's the, the catching away of the body of Christ before the time of change control. Uh, uh, go back to 1 John chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1. Okay. 1 John chapter 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, of the capital W word of life. Seven times the capital W word appears in every one, like in that connotation, is a reference unto the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Seven times. A Bible has it six because they take out the Johannian comma. Warning. Warning. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shew unto you that eternal life which was with the Father, and was manifest unto us, that which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him, walk in darkness, we lie, and do not the truth. You, you're a sinless perfectionist. You're not saved. You're not saved. Okay? A novice who is actually a saint, the Lord will rescue them out of that. You're one of these guys teaching this, like uh, Ray Comfort, uh, Paul Washer, those types of guys, Calvinists, of course. Um, you're not, they're not saved. They're not saved. Okay? If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. You sinless perfectionists, you're liars. You're lost. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. And I'm sure uh, these people... Sinless perfectionists are all about, you know, the unpardonable sin that you can... Stupid. This is what happens when you don't rightly divide the word of truth. This kind of stuff. Okay? Okay? It is. Saints, we know this. Okay? Let's continue. 
And it says, the, And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanseth us from all sin. The unburdenable sin. People. The only one who mentions that is the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. Peter doesn't mention it. Paul doesn't mention it. Okay? It is only relevant when Jesus Christ is physically present. Physically. Okay? As he will be during the kingdom of heaven, which is all works. Because you're going to be able to see him on the throne. And what is what is faith? Okay? What, how do you define faith? Never mind a dictionary. You don't need one. You got one right in your hands. If you got the authorized version of the scriptures. Okay, you got one right in your hands. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. During the kingdom of heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be on the throne. You're going to see him. Faith is not necessary. Like the Garden of Eden. They didn't need faith because they saw God. But yet the antinomianists come around and say that it's by grace through faith. Idiots. Anyway, I'm not talking about that. Okay? All right? The unpardonable sin we don't have to worry about today. You don't have to worry about that during the kingdom of, uh, excuse me, during the time of Jacob's trouble either. It's the kingdom of heaven. And see, during the time of Jacob's trouble, it's faith and works. You're going to have other things to worry about besides the unpardonable sin. The only ones who are going to be uh, sealed during the time of Jacob's trouble are the 144,000 Hebraic Jews. Okay? Not Hamites, not Japhethites. Not Chinese, Japanese, or anything like that. No, the break Jews. Okay? Now, verses 8 and 10. On to verse 10 in 1 John. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. That's before salvation. I agree. I've talked to a lot of people. I've, I've you know, to Tract and Tuesday. Okay? Even had, uh, even had a witness to, uh, you know, Tract and Tuesday. Lots of them. Anyway. Okay? I've talked to many people, lost people, it's like, well, I'm not a sinner. I don't believe in sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Want to try? No? Okay, bye. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And here's another of sinless perfectionism. If we say that we have not sinned, or I don't sin anymore, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. And that's not a capital W word. See, verse 8 is talking about before salvation. Verse 9, two ways. Uh, call upon the name of the Lord, or a saint who sins. Hey, I, Lord, I'm sorry, I sinned, forgive me, okay? Verse 10, a saved individual. If we say we have not sinned, I don't sin anymore. And the thing about the law, the thing about the law, okay, got to remember, got to remember about the law. Because, you know, okay, if you got to stop sinning, then what, what do you got to do? And if you sin, then you lose your salvation and you got to gain it back again, according to these devils, right? And they, they're usually stickler for the laws, for the law, right? Uh, you got to remember about the law. And this is where Mark, people, devils like Mark the Messenger come in. He's like, you got to keep the... Acts 15, verses 6 unto verse 11. And the apostles and the elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing... Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. God is not a respecter of persons today. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the necks of the disciples? 
which neither our fathers nor we could bear were able to bear. What is that talking about? Verses 1 on uh, of verse 1 um, oh, well, well verse 1 definitely and certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses ye cannot be saved. Ah hmm Yes. And verse 5. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Mm. We can't keep the law of Moses perfectly. And today in this dispensation, you don't have to keep the law to be right with God, be saved, stay saved, or anything like that. And as you just saw, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. See, you can't keep the law perfectly. And that was the point, to show you your inadequacy. But when Christ comes in you, the hope of glory, okay, you're sealed onto the day of redemption. You need to abstain from sin, but you got to remember, you can't stop sinning. You can't. Are you, or are you God? Hmm? Are you God? <laughs> but we believe that through the grace of the Lord... Jesus Christ, we shall be saved, even as they. Notice how it says grace there. The ultimate, and now, okay, we just went through this uh, to give you meat about this sinless perfection heresy, okay? To prove to you scripturally that sinless perfectionism today is heresy. Absolutely heres heretical of the devil. Comes from Rome. Out there, outside the door, come across these people. Number one, ignore them, like Jesus did. He's like, I ain't even paying attention to you. But if push comes to shove, you got to remember, the greatest place to disprove sinless perfection, Romans 7. Romans 7, written by the, uh, God through the Apostle Paul, who said, don't sin! Sin, see that you don't sin. Uh, uh, be angry and sin not. Yes, he said that. Yes, he did. Was Paul preaching sinless perfection? No. Or else we got a problem with Romans 7. Romans 7, verses 4 to close. Wherefore, my brethren, ye are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? You're not bound to the law. You lost people that at the great white throne, that's what you're going to be judged by. You're going to be judged by a perfect standard, the authorized version, God's word. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness, in newness of spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter. And like I said, with this you got to be careful, because this is where the sinless, uh, excuse me, the antinomianist, free grace, devil pond scum comes in. It's like, hey, continue in sin, that grace may abound. Read Romans 6. Let's continue. And oldness of the letter, referring on to the Old Testament, the law. And heretics like this, uh, like Jean Bonshoff, it's like, see, I forget the, he didn't say scriptures. You don't need the Bible. Put away the Bible. And yeah, put away the Bible. Read the scriptures. Okay, let's continue. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law sin was dead. Sin, taking occasion by the commandment. You might not know what you're doing is sin. Or along comes the Satan, it's like, here, did, did, see this? That, you're, that's sin, according to what God says.
but sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law, sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once. Hey! Living along, just doing whatever. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. It, oh. God says that's sin? I... Well, the, well, the authorized version. Well, the Greek says this. Well, I don't like that. See, in John chapter 8, there were many who believed on him. I think it was John chapter 8, where they, you know, they were like, well, we, we be not born of fornication. You know, we have one, one God, even, we have one Father, even God. Abraham is our Father. But then Jesus said, Ye are of your father the devil. What did they do? Do we not say right that you are a devil? See, they justify, they justify, they justify. And then when they couldn't justify themselves anymore, they attacked the Lord. Round and round and round. A saint eventually will stop. I have met many people claiming to be saints. But they keep the thing going, trying to justify themselves. And when they can't, through scripture, they attack you. And the commandment which was ordained to life, yeah, to keep you from sin, I found to be unto death. Why? For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. You can't be sinlessly perfect, Jack. It's impossible. And all you wicked devils out there, Paul, the greatest of the saints of the church of the living God, he missed that memo on sinless perfectionism. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid! But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment may, might become exceeding sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Our spirit and soul are housed in this sagging sin suit, friend. You can't stop sinning. The thought of foolishness is sin. Get over yourself. See, you're lying and you're full of pride. You wicked devil. You filth. And see, and how do they argue this? That was before he was saved. Really? Really? Yeah, well, Paul's talking about before his salvation. See, you want people to trust you. What's the perfect standard there, pal? I don't know if this guy uses the scriptures. I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. He's teaching sinless perfection. Devil. But that's that's the argument. That was before he was saved. For that which I do. Present tense. I allow not. You, you, that, that's present tense. If it was about, if it was like these devils say, well, that's before his salvation, then it would read, for that which I did, I didn't allow, or something like that. That's not what it says. It's all present tense. And in Acts 21, Paul plainly sinned. Okay? He had pride. Paul had a pride problem. Okay? For that which I do, I allow not. For that, what, for that which I do, I allow not. Paul sinned. For what I would, that do I not. Not sin. Sinlessly perfect. Couldn't do it. But what I hate, sin, that do I. If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. See, if you suddenly now 
can become sinlessly perfect, then you're God. Because only God could keep the Ten Commandments. Paul couldn't do it. We just read in Acts 15, none of, the, none of the Hebraic Jews could do it perfectly, but yet you can. Now, it is no more I that do it, but sin dwelleth in me. Sin, the flesh. For I know that in me, he answers that, he's like, in verse 18, that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. And he had the Lord in him, as well as us. But he, how to do that which is good I find not. Which proves what? God wouldn't hold the gun to Paul's head, forcing him to do the right thing. You have to make the right choices. Okay? For the good that I would, I do not. Not sin. But the evil which I would not, sin, that do I. You wicked, vile, vomitous devil, Mr. Air, open air preacher, I don't care what your name is. The Lord rebuke you. And you can take your satanic doctrine and go straight to hell with it, boy. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. He found the law. Oh, you mean that Paul was morally keeping, uh, doing the things of the law, like thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not covet, thou shalt not commit adultery? Okay, uh, we don't have to, you know, like keeping the Sabbath. No, you don't have to uh, do the dietary things. Dietary things, if you want to, fine. It's not a self-ethic requirement. You found in a law. I'm coveting. Okay? That's, see, that's, that's a stab at these antinomianists who aren't under any even morality of any law. Any law. Except the one that they create themselves. Okay? I find in the law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, the hidden man of the heart, the inward man, the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. But I see another law in my members, eyes, hands, feet, yep, head, okay? Warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity of the law of sin, which is in my members, meaning... Paul wasn't sinlessly perfect. Paul couldn't stop sinning. And you got this idiot who we're about to look at here pretty quick who says that he stopped sinning. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? See, your spirit and soul are housed in the sagging sin suit. You can't stop sinning. And this isn't, and with that, you don't, I mean, read Romans 6. That doesn't mean that you just chuck everything off. It's like, hey, I'm going to live it up. Hey, the more I sin, no! No. We are to strive against sin. But see, you can't be sinlessly perfect. You can't. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. See, Paul isn't justifying it. What, he is he, what he's telling you is, look, you're going to sin. Repent of it. Ask forgiveness for it. You won't lose salvation, of course, because you can't lose what's not yours. And go on to the next one. Okay? You're going to sin. Don't be all wrapped up in your head about you doing, I mean, it's like, that's not, and see, that's not to make a mock at sin. Not at all. But be aware, even at your best, you're going to sin. You can't stop sinning. Now that does not mean 
You chuck it all off and just give in to it. No, you strive against sin. Video for that will be for you in the description box of that as well. Okay? But Paul's like, hey, you're going to sin. Strive against it. Strive not to sin. We've already looked at the verses showing that. But guess what? You can't be sinlessly perfect. You can't be sinlessly perfect like this idiot open air preacher this old fart okay this guy this was and this when on Friday the video where does it say right there you see that one why Christians who stop sinning are greatly persecuted. Now see, that was a real shrewd thing. And see, a saint come along giving him scripture. He's like, hey, look, see? See, I've stopped. And look at this guy. Okay, look at this guy. 1 John 1.8. Okay, he did a video about that. What we just discussed, he calls calling that fake. Okay, and again right there, Question, are you a child of the devil? I'm sure he'll go to 1 John 3, okay? Th th this, okay? In this video, 100% proof Christians stop sinning. This, the, hey, you! I'm going to put the link for your channel too, you wicked devil. The Lord rebuke you, you, you scum, okay? The Lord rebuke you. The scripture, the authorized version of the scripture has just proven you, Mr. Open Air Preacher, whatever your name is, okay? The Scripture has proven you a liar. You are a liar. And your father is the devil. Okay? Why? I mean, and, and like I said, you, you saints, you saints, you, you know this. And, and he's getting all kinds of views. He's got... He's got a lot of subscribers and stuff like that. And, you know, four hours ago, don't be deceived by line signs and what. The reason why we do not celebrate Easter or whatever like that. Okay. And, and, and again, 1 John. <laughs> okay. This, this guy's a devil. This guy is a devil. Okay. Watch out for this kind of stuff. And what is this? And, okay. And this guy's on TikTok. And he just started... April 28, 2023, and he's got 400 videos. They do not rest. They do not sleep unless they cause some to fall. But, hey, you know, hey, sinless perfection, right? Now, watch out for guys like people. This guy is not saved. This guy is a devil. Okay, this guy is a devil. Watch out for him. Watch out for guys like him. Okay? Scripture has just proved him a liar. I haven't watched one of his videos. I don't need to. The Scripture. The authorized version. The perfect and errant given by inspiration word of God has just proven that guy a liar. People, don't fall for this guy or his lying heresies or whatever. Okay? That is going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. Thank you, dear brethren, sisters, for everything. Thank you. I love you. We will see you in the next video. Watch out for this devil. Okay? Bye-bye.